and I am a teaching artist with Meadow Arts, a nonprofit art organization located in Twist, Washington. Those of us at Meadow Arts know that this is an unusual year and that you are most likely doing a lot of learning from home. Well, one of the great things about art is, is that you can do it pretty much anywhere. You can do it at your home, in your bedroom, in the kitchen. You can even do it outside like where I am at a park. So right now, it might be a great time to start incorporating more art. Become a little more creative. Learn to use your imagination and maybe even see the world a little differently. We're going to be using our creativity and our imaginations to create some chlorophyll rubbings, just like this one here. What you will need for this project is some leaves, a spoon, some paper, a hard surface to draw on, crayons, markers, or even pencils. So go ahead and take this chance to pause the video if you do not have the materials in front of you right now. Once you have all the materials that I just listed in front of you, then you can go ahead and press play again and we'll continue on with the lesson. All right, at this point, you most likely have your materials. But you may be wondering, what is chlorophyll? Well, have you ever run across the grass so fast that you end up tripping and falling, and then you've got those green stains, called grass stains, on your knees or your pants? Well, that green that you've got on your pants is because of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green dye in plants. And chlorophyll is part of the process that plants go through in order to make food, which is called photosynthesis. And we're going to learn a little bit more on what is needed for plants to grow by reading this book called The Amazing Life Cycle of Plants. The Amazing Life Cycle of Plants. Written by Kay Barnum illustrated by Maddie Frost. Look around you. How many plants and flowers and trees and grasses can you see? These natural beauties grow over and over again, but how do they do it? Get ready to dig deep and find out more about the amazing life cycle of a plant. A seed is a baby plant. It is wrapped in a shell to keep it safe until it is time to grow. There are lots of different types of seeds. Avocado stones, apple seeds, and acorns are all seeds. For a seed to grow, everything must be just right. There must be enough water, heat, and light, as well as the right type of soil. When the seed cracks open, roots grow down and a shoot grows up. This sunflower seed has turned into a seedling. The shoot grows taller and thicker. Soon it becomes the plant's stem. The stem is strong enough to support the plant. As it grows bigger and more leaves appear, it also carries water and food from the roots. These will help the plant grow. The plant's leaves are very important. They take gas in. They take in a gas called carbon dioxide. When this gas mixes with water and sunlight, it makes a sugary food for the plant. Now the plant has energy to grow. The leaves give out another gas called oxygen. Humans need oxygen to survive. Once the plant is fully grown, flowers appear. First there is a bud. Slowly this opens to show the petals. Flowers are bright and bold. They have a strong smell. This makes it easy for bees, butterflies, and other creatures to find them. Deep inside the flower, there's a sweet liquid called nectar. Bees use, it, use this to make honey. Insects drink it to give them energy. As they hunt for nectar, creatures carry pollen from flower to flower. Pollen also floats through the air in the wind. 
It is because of pollen that flowers make seeds. It is important that seeds do not fall straight down. If they land in the plant's shade, seeds will not grow. Instead, the plant scatters its seeds far and wide. When seeds travel to many different places, more of them might grow into new plants. Seeds scatter in different ways. The wind might blow them away. Seeds might float on the tide. Sometimes seed pods burst and fire their seeds outward. Animals scattered seeds too. When they eat fruit, the seeds hidden inside travel through the animals and out the other end. Did you know that some trees and plants need fire to survive? This giant redwood tree does not release seeds until there is a fire. The heat then makes the pine cones open. Ash from the fire makes the soil the perfect place for a new tree to grow. Plants such as ferns, mosses, and algae do not grow seeds. They grow tiny round spores instead. The wind blows spores away from the plant. Some land in damp places, and if other spores land nearby, a brand new plant may start to grow. A plant's life cycle is a, is a time it takes to grow from seed to flower, scatter seeds, and die. The life cycle of some plants takes just weeks. Others might live for a year. The life cycle of the Madagascar palm tree is as long as a hundred years. The life cycles of plants are very important to farmers and gardeners. Farmers need to know when to sow crops and when they will be ready to harvest. Gardeners need to know what to plant so that their gardens are colorful all year round. The end. Okay, so the first step that you're going to do is you're going to grab either a pencil or marker or a crayon, whatever you're drawing with today, and you're going to make some tree trunks. So I'm going to make some curvy tree trunks. And I'm going to make three that are spaced out pretty evenly. So here, you can see I've made one, two, three tree trunks. You don't have to make them the same size as mine. They don't have to be curvy. If you want to make straight tree trunks, that's totally up to you. Just whatever kind of tree trunks you choose to make, make sure you leave some room at the top because that's where we're going to fill in with the chlorophyll rubbings to make the green tops of the trees. So if you need some time to get your tree trunks just right, go ahead and pause the video and then come back to the next part. Okay, now that you've got your tree trunks, the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a leaf and your spoon. I've noticed that in order for this to work really well, it's best to try to use the back side of the leaf. So I'm gonna put, place the back side of the leaf down on top of the paper, take the bottom of the spoon and place it on top and then begin to rub. What's going to begin to happen is that you're going to rub that green chlorophyll onto the paper. What also is going to happen is you're going to rub little holes in the leaf so it's important to remember not to rub in the same spot because right here, I'm not gonna get any green from this spot. So I have to move over into a different place. And you're just gonna keep rubbing until you filled up a good part of the top of the tree. Okay, keep going back and forth. It's kinda like coloring with a leaf. Coloring with chlorophyll. Okay, so I pretty much use this leaf up. One thing that you might want to do too is I have this board that's clipped on, but I've noticed the paper still kind of moves around. You might want to also make sure to tape, if you have tape, all sides of the paper too on the surface. So I got all these holes now, and this is what the first tree looks like here. One other option you can try doing is you can take a leaf and crumple it up and 
fingers and then rub. What I have noticed doing this is that it doesn't go on quite as dark as if you were using a spoon. So I'll show you the difference here. Okay, so not as dark. Um, still another way that you could do it though. So if you want um, some different shading, so maybe some dark leaves and some light leaves. But I'm gonna go back to using the spoon. So I'm gonna get another leaf because I already made a bunch of holes in that other one. I'm just gonna keep going back and forth. And this just requires a little bit of patience. It's okay if you don't get it totally right the first time. Take some practice. Also, it might not be a bad idea to take your hand, kind of create an L with it, and then pull down your paper so it doesn't wiggle too much. If your paper's wiggling too much, it's going to be hard for you to get that chlorophyll on there. Okay? All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go back and kind of fill in the other one that had the lighter rubbing on it, just to make sure it's nice and dark, okay? All right, and so now I have my three trees. At this point, you can go back in and kind of do a little bit more decorating. So if you wanna color in the tree trunks, you can add clouds in the sky. Maybe you want to do some grass. Add some flowers. It's really up to you what kind of scene you want to make. Maybe some birds. Maybe a sun. All right, I'm just gonna color in the trunks of the trees just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so here's my three very simple trees. I'll add some grass, clouds, sun, flowers to finish mine off. Thank you for joining me in this art lesson today. I look forward to the next time that we can create some more art together. Bye for now.